Hey folks, welcome to the Daily Dude. Yesterday's video was a little bit long. I get long-winded sometimes, and that happened. And uh, I still wasn't able to make all the points that I would have liked to make. Uh, namely, one of those points is I'm all talk and no action at this point. So if you're tilling your garden, people have been doing that for a long time with success, by all means, Go about your business. I'm just, uh, honestly, I'm just, just trying to be helpful and uh, spread some knowledge around. And uh, doing today's video, I'm, I'm going through the random facts, and I come across uh, one random fact that led me to the path of this video so that I can uh, make a few points today, which I was unable to do yesterday about, uh, you know, homestead, smaller gardens. Unlike, you know, I, I truly believe in the cover crops when you're talking about you know, half of the ground in you know, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, Iowa. There's just all these states where we're doing the, we're tilling and uh, not covering and that's, that's much different than what you're doing in your backyard. So I do want to make that distinction today. Um, one of the videos I came across from the 30 random facts about you guys of the videos that you're doing, this guy is not all talk and no action like me. He's got action behind it. And so let's just go have a look. Oh, yeah. And pay attention to the background as he's talking also. You'll see his garden set up and uh, a row cover. I didn't grow up on a farm. In fact, I probably didn't grow any garden vegetables until about eight or nine years ago. Once my wife and I bought our first home, I made a goal. I said, I am going to have my own garden and I am going to grow some vegetables. And then I did just that. And that is when the farm and gardening bug hit me. And I was like, where has this been all my life? There hadn't been any farmers in my family since my great, great, grandfather. That is Mike from Big Pond Farm in North Carolina and I learned about him from this video from Justin Rhodes. Duckman quacks and they follow. Check out his garden rows. Nice and tight. He's got plant, he's planted things compact. He's learned a lot from Curtis Stone and J.M. Fortier. Is that how you say his name? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, okay. Forgive me if I butchered it, J.M. Aha! Urban farmer Curtis Stone and Jean Martin Fortier. Uh, yeah, no, no French accent. I gave it a try. Sorry, JM, for butchering your name. Uh, but of course, Justin Rhodes would bring up them. Uh, they're doing uh, gardening, urban, urban market gardening without cover crops. Well, or are they? Uh, they are using covers, uh, and that's what I want to get to today, is you've got a lot of options out there besides the wood chips from Back to Eden Garden. Uh, there's the lasagna method where you can use leaves and grass clippings and compost and, and all that stuff, or you can uh, use landscape fabrics, tarps. There are many different w straw, hay, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm still learning about all this stuff. But there are a lot of different methods you can use to grow food. And so let's get into some of those today with urban farmer Curtis Stone especially. And he learned under J.M. Fortier. They both have books out on how they're, how they're making buku bucks on small amount of land. So let's, let's learn how they do it. Urban farmer Curtis Stone. All right, so this tarps are what I like to call appropriate technology. They're so simple and they, there doesn't really seem much to it, but this is a real game changer in market gardening for a variety of reasons. So this really is, is part of it. It's kind of a three-fold system with, uh, with low till or no till using a tarp and a flame weeder. Those three things in combination really, really reduces your weed pressure. And, um, but the landscape fabric, this was a game changer for me. And um, I started using this a couple years ago and when I was consulting for Ray, I, I, I started, I got him using it and it's changed the game for them. 
because they were pulling so many weeds all the time. Now they're not doing it. How to use tarps and fabrics by urban farmer Curtis Stone is a uh, short video of a seminar that he put on talking about how to use tarps and fabrics and all of the benefits that come with that. Being able to plant into dry soil even though it's been raining for a week straight is a benefit. Keeping the soil temperature down and weed control, which is why most of us till in the first place is to reduce the weed pressure. Well, there are other options. So you'll learn more about this at Urban Farmer Curtis Stone. The next video, how much is a quarter acre and what is possible. If you're not familiar with Urban Farmer Curtis Stone, this gives you a pretty good overview of what he's doing. He's farming in an urban environment in a normal neighborhood in small spaces. And it really is incredible the amount of production that he is able to get out of these spaces using modern techniques that have uh, JM Fortier has also taught him up in Canada. So let's give a listen into this. And the key to maxing out a quarter acre is getting as much production on those beds as possible. And so in my book, I write about this, I call it high rotation. That means that on those beds, we're only gonna put crops that grow fast have a high density per square foot, have a high yield per square foot, and we can sell at a reasonable price per pound, and are in demand. And that's an important distinction to make between uh, market gardening like they're doing and a uh, regular backyard garden. But we can still use some of those same techniques. Now obviously they're not growing long growing crops that take a long time to mature and they're also not growing uh, plants that take up a lot of space so like uh, corn and beans which need to to, uh, to crawl and, and take up a lot of space squash pumpkins which hey that's the three sisters garden right there which which is a is a good point from our history is the three sisters garden the corn uh, you grow the corn, it grows tall, you've got the, and it, uh, it grows taller than the pumpkins, and the beans crawl up the corn stalks, but the pumpkins serve as the ground cover in, in that scenario. It is protecting the, the ground from the sun, so it's keeping the soil cooler, and it's also protect, protecting the ground from the rain hitting it directly uh, and uh, splashing up onto the uh, and and uh, spreading, you know, funguses and diseases onto the plants that really don't need to be there. They need to be in in the soil breaking down things. So the the Three Sisters Garden is another example of, of ground cover that works in, to our benefit. And our next video also comes from urban farmer Curtis Stone as he sits down and interviews J.M. Fortier about these methods. When do you rototill? Because I mean, I, I know with some crops as a farmer, there's a lot more crop residue yep. that lets left over. And so are there still times where, you, where just using the BCS tiller implement is necessary? All right, so if you're reading The Market Gardener, you'll, you'll hear and understand that we're, we've moved away from that and we're talking about minimal tillage, all right? So I could explain that to the viewers, but that doesn't mean that we're really against the rotor till. Yeah. We're, what we're trying to do is move away from it. Because the rotor till is really handy. You know, we've farmed with it for a couple of years, and what it does is that when you go through with, with it on a BCS or you know, a walking tractor, it's really heavy and it works is that the soil looks great and but eventually it compacts the soil more yeah so if you're renting land if you're growing on, on people's lawn for one or two season there's no problem yeah. but if you're farming for 30 years yeah. on that acre and a half intensively rotor tiller is a big yeah it's a big no-no yeah. so that was the reason why we moved away from it and replacing it with tarps to prepare soil that's because we're leaving tarps for two to three weeks and it's just crazy. You take the tarps off and then poof, it's yeah. clean, it's ready to see. Yeah. And then using the broad fork instead to aerate the soil without turning it and uh, using the rest of this great interview you'll find at Urban Farmer Curtis Stone. The link will be below. 
And for our final video, let's head back over to Living Web Farms, one of my favorite YouTube channels. And this video, they it's, this is a playlist, a whole series that they did with JM Fortier. And I think it's 14 videos long. He really gets in depth onto the modern techniques and practices that he's using uh i won't go much further into this but you'll if you're interested in maximizing the yield in your gardens i would strongly recommend you watching this the idea today is to present to you an image what i've described in my book the market gardener and the premise of everything is that you can make a really decent livelihood farming on small acreage. We've been doing this for more than a decade and we've learned so many things along the way. And if I had known all that we've came up with when I started, I think that we, that would really kickstart our career. So hopefully we're passing this on to you guys. And yes, just trying to pass along the information and that's the point of this channel and sorry these videos are a little bit longer there's just so much information that I've learned that gets me excited that I that I want to share with other people now obviously using these methods from urban farmer Curtis Stone and uh, JM Fortier and uh, his predecessors also there you know there's Sepp Holzer and and uh, Jeff Lawton and a whole bunch of people I, I am forgetting that pioneered the way on these topics uh, this requ their methods require some investment tarps aren't free landscape fabric isn't free uh, rototillers aren't free there that requires some investment that you know whether or not it pays off for you that's for you to determine they're they're making quite a bit of money on small acreage so uh, and that is very labor intensive you won't see me trying to go into business like that uh, if somebody wants to rent land for me or something to do that that's another story but I am not going to be out there uh, doing a lot of physical labor um, but back to the topic of covering your naked garden uh, you know even uh, buying a rototiller is is it's not free well some people can come up with them free but typically there's some there's some costs involved so what can you do for free and that's the lasagna method uh, there are not many leaves on the ground right now but in the fall there will be leaves and it would be advisable to rake those up stick them in a bag and you got them uh, same with your grass clippings you know I know bagging is such a pain but uh, catching those those grass clippings and bagging them that's also another free tool you can use to build up the lasagna layers in your garden to improve your soil over time okay let's see yesterday's random fact number five was uh, I did a lot of adventuring I forgot to mention my trips to Mackinac Island Yellowstone the Tetons I've been to like 38 some states I should sit down and look at that again but anyway that's yesterday's random fact today's random fact isn't all that exciting either when I was a kid I I didn't have a dog or a cat because uh, we were always every weekend every other weekend we were out traveling and and going away two weeks for caterpillar vacation every summer we would take off for two weeks so we didn't have pets like that but I did have aquariums I was very much into freshwater aquariums never did salt water it's a little more expensive but as, as a kid and the pet store was five miles I would ride my bike out to the pet store all the time and I just got really into aquariums um, not so much goldfish but uh, guppies swordtails uh, you could breed those easily and then I got into cichlids uh, South American and a African cichlids and I did some breeding of cichlids also the convicts were easy Jack Dempsey's um, Burchardi the little blue fish those are so beautiful uh, one of the most beautiful freshwater fishes that I ever had and I was they're hard to breed and I was able to get them to breed a few times and you know take them to the pet stores and train them for free fish food uh, that that was a, a losing adventure although some of those fish these days are 
they're getting expensive. People are paying 30, 40 bucks for an African cichlid because they're getting a little bit harder to find. And I'm probably up to 20 minutes on this video. Ugh, so much for keeping these short. And that's also why I haven't come out with a digest in a while is I've been spending so much time on the daily videos. I thought I'd be able to keep these short and uh, to all maybe do two or three in a day. <laughs> that was a joke. And, and so that I'd still be able to do the digest. And I that just has not happened. So with that, take care. Don't leave your garden naked. And always use a wind filter.